So we're going to look at pediculosis, which is just a fancy name uh, to mean um, lice infestation. So um, by definition, pediculosis is a medical term which refers to infestation uh, of lice. And this is a term that comes from a Latin word pediculus, which means louse. So that's how the, the term pediculosis um, came about. So it, it can be an infestation on the scalp um, that is in the head or the hairy parts of the body or clothes that uh, people are putting on that have the adult lice or it can be having the larvae or the eggs. Um, so we have different types of, uh, three main types actually of pediculosis. So we can have the head louse, um, which is normally caused by pediculus humanus capitis, or most people just know it as pediculus capitis. And um, then we have um, pubic lice, or sometimes called the crab lice, and they call the crab lice because of um, the features of how the um, um, the appendages look like. Um, so this is uh, caused by uh, theras pubis. Then we have um, the body lice, uh, body louse, basically, which um, is caused by pediculus humanus corporis, or basically pediculus uh, corporis. Um, so in terms of life cycle, generally all these uh, three types have the same kind of uh, life cycle. Uh, the difference basically of the different pediculosis is just where exactly they normally occur from. But in terms of life cycle, we normally just start from um, the eggs. So the eggs um, um, are normally produced in a huge amount. So like one, um, one, um, preg okay, one female, uh, one female, uh, Laos can actually end up producing hundreds and hundreds of um, eggs, which are also called needs. So the eggs uh, that are produced uh, end up developing into larvae. And we have um, three main larvae stages. And basically what happens in these larvae stages, um, or what we're calling the nymph, is basically molting or the ch just changing of structure, basically. Um, and then we end up having an adult. Okay, so the adults... <clears throat> um, which can either be male or female, so they end up mating and they um, the female one ends up now producing eggs or releasing eggs. So during the adult stage and also the larvae stage or the nymph stage, they um, they normally take blood meal uh, from their human host. So uh, if we look now in depth um, on each condition, on each type, so we have pediculosis capitis, basically uh, this is the one that is... Um, that normally affects the scalp. So in terms of epidemiological distribution, this is found everywhere in the world. Uh, there's no like special area that um, has it. Um, then um, there's certain conditions that um, make people predisposed to this. So especially it's very common in schools and daycare centers. And it's normally because of the close interaction and also contact with um, infested clothing. So if you put on a cloth, uh, clothes or hats um, or use of combs uh, or use of even audio devices from people that have it, you might end up actually getting, um, for example, the eggs. So they normally, the head lice is normally situated in the head, as you know, in the fine hair of the head, but can also occasionally be found even on the eyebrows. So you need to know that the eggs are laid at the base of the um, uh, the at the base of the hair of the head, and that normally they cement. It cements itself, um, or the or the um, the egg is cemented on the uh, uh, on the strands of the hair. So, um, in terms of um, the spread of the head lice, um, it's obviously a contact disease. So, contact with infested people or infested items like comb or something. And as you can see, you find the egg that is cemented on the base of the shaft of uh, the hair. So symptoms normally um, of somebody who has infestation is basically itchiness and irritability, uh, especially around the area where you have these eggs or, or you have the or adult or whichever stage. Also, there is excessive scratching and uh, normally we people end up getting now secondary infections. So as a public health risk of head lice, so it can cause severe nuisance and social embarrassment. Remember, if you have this and people notice that you're having um, a louse or lice, then you're going to have um, some embarrassment. So potential for secondary infection, as they say, because of the excessive itching and uh, scratching that people get. So no, there is no known involvement of head lice as a vector of uh, any known disease. What we know is that uh, b basically, uh, apart from the some cases of um, um, louse-born diseases, but uh, they're not specifically for head lice. Okay, other forms of um, lice actually cause that. 
Um, so in terms of treatment, uh, the, the main, we have so many other kinds of combination, but Cabaril, uh, Lindane, and Malathion can be applied normally topically, and then they can, um, especially on the scalp, and then after some time they can be washed off. In terms of control, therefore, we only need to avoid contact with the uh, people who are infested with this, um, um, the, with, with the louse, then or avoid contact with um, infested items like the combs, and also, if possible, remove the eggs and lice with fingers or knit or comb um, so that you reduce the numbers that are there. So if we go to pediculosis corporis, um, so basically this is the body louse, if you think of it. So in terms of distribution here, mostly found in the temperate regions, especially like um, Africa, Asia, and America. So um, normally uh, it, it, it favors the crowded and unsanitary conditions, which are associated with um, places where like you have um, what are, uh, these people who are, uh, are, are fleeing uh, wars and other things so you can find because they're put um, in one place you can find that they, they it becomes a very good area for spread so also people are on shelter like for example after um, a catastrophe like a hurricane or earthquake because of the kind of shelter that they're getting and they uh, close contact or crowdedness then they end up developing this also, you find in places where, like, people are staying in um, shanties or in um, places where that are crowded, um, then you end up getting uh, this. This ends up being easily spread. Um, so, location of the body that this kind of lice likes, obviously, uh, it is in the clothing. By the way, body lice. It's it, it, I know it's called body lice, but typically it will not be found on the body. So it will be on the cloth. So taking a blood meal, so it will just bite. Then just attach itself on the, on the on the clothes. So normally you not even find it on the on the on the body. It will be on the, the cloth unless you have very heavy infestation. So eggs typically are glued onto clothing uh, fibers and um, or the seams of the clothes, but um, occasionally they can be on body hair as well. So primarily, <clears throat> it's spread via contact with infested people. Also, uh, if, if you're sharing clothing or beddings, uh, the symptoms are more or less the same, itching and irritability. And as, as a result, we can end up having other secondary infections. So the, uh, just as the previous one we talked about, uh, this can be a severe nuisance and social embarrassment, um, but it can be a vector as opposed to what we, we saw in Capitis uh, corporis, the, the the, the organism itself, basically the, this type of louse can actually be a vector, especially of louse-borne diseases. Um, then um, in treatment here, basically patients should take a bath and put on cl uh, clean clothes. Um, this clothes, it's preferably if they can get it ironed. Um, and also other other, um, other other drugs like benzyl, benzoate, lindane, steel, and malathion. So actually most of the time lindane and malathion will be used in any of those cases, including capitis or coporis. Um, in terms of control, avoid contact with these people who are infested. Try to actually have some sort of hygiene um, in terms of clothing as well and, and the beddings that you have. Um, infested items should be washed and at least try to avoid um, uh, sharing clothes and other things. So Use of high temperatures, actually like washing the clothes in high temperature water can really uh, be uh, good. Um, so for pubis, lastly, uh, pubis, as you know, it's the, it's the louse that actually is found in the pubic region. This one is found all over the world in terms of distribution. And the, the, it favors actually uh, transmission, especially in like sexual activity. Uh, if you're having sexual activity with um, somebody who is infested, with um, the, the this kind of uh, pubic lice. So location of pubic lice obviously will be on, on the hair, the genital area, um, uh, occasionally in other locations like eyelashes, eyebrows and mustaches. But you have to know that uh, the pubic louse eggs are laid at the base of them, of the hair, okay? So in terms of um, um, spread, and how it spreads. So primarily because it's found in the pubic region, the, the most common way it's you'll get it when you have having sexual intercourse. Okay, but in some cases where it might be easily spread in infested bed uh, beddings or toilet seats.
uh, but that is very rare. Mostly it's uh, during sexual intercourse. The symptoms are the same in terms of itchiness, irritability, and then we might end up having secondary infection because of the scratching of the skin. Um, so severe nuisance um, and also embarrassment can be some of the public health risk of this and also secondary infection. Uh, as well, uh, there's no evidence basically that pub pubic lice um, is a vector for any disease. So treatment is more or less the same. We have malathion still in this case, but we also can use pomethrin, prim. There's also pyrethrin, um, which is an, in a combination with a piperonyl. Um, also, ivermectin can be given normally as an oral dose. Uh, control of pubic lice is basically avoid sexual relations with somebody who is infested, but also to maintain hygiene, especially of the clothing or, or the beddings that uh, uh, you use.